Unreal Engine 5 gives you a game engine, but you still have to make the game. Narrative Pro fills that gap, giving you a game framework built on all the cutting edge features in Unreal 5, like combat built on game playability system, animation built on motion matching, UI built on common UI, and quest and dialogue tools built right into the editor. We basically cover implementing all of Unreal Engine 5's complex features for you. Today in 10 minutes I'll show you how to set Narrative Pro 2 up and cover some of the basics, so let's get started. If you're having trouble with this guide for any reason, you can download the finished project in the description below. You will still need Narrative Pro 2 installed to the engine for it to work, but I would recommend trying to follow the installation guide here because it does go over some of the basics of the plugin. In order to follow this video, you will need Narrative Pro. The link will be in the description to grab it on the Fab Marketplace. Once you have downloaded it, you will see it here in your Fab library. Make sure you have Unreal Engine 5.5 or later, as that is what we are using in today's video, and then just click on Install, 5.5, and then click Install here. Make sure to disable other Narrative plugins if you're using Narrative Pro, as this can cause issues. While we're waiting for that to download, I've opened Unreal Engine 5.5. I'm going to go to Games. I'm going to make a blank project. We'll go with the C++. You could do Blueprint. And I'm just going to call it Narrative Tutorial, and then I will click on Create. Okay, so Narrative Pro is finished downloading. We're going to move it out of the engine and into our project. To move the plugin into your project rather than having it in the engine, which we really don't recommend, we're going to go to wherever Unreal Engine is installed, usually Program Files, Epic Games, UE 5.5. Go to Engine, Plugins, Marketplace, and it'll have like a weird code. This is fine, don't worry about that. We're going to basically cut this, so Control X to cut it. And we'll go into wherever our new Unreal Engine project is, and we're going to put it in here instead. So we'll go New Folder. Plugins, and then just Control V to paste that in there. And I'm just going to change that name because I don't really like that code. You don't actually need it in there. I'm going to rename this to Narrative Pro so that looks a little bit nicer. And now all you have to do is close and reopen the project and the plugin will actually be installed to this project rather than being installed to the engine itself, which usually you do not want. Now that we've put Narrative Pro in that plugins folder, we're just going to add some project settings into the project that Narrative requires. To do that, you can just go into Narrative Pro, Resources, INI Setups, Replace, copy these, and then go into your config folder and just paste them in here, and you are done. That's it. If you're adding Narrative Pro to an existing project rather than a new project like we're doing here, just go into the Add folder, and you just need to copy the lines in these into the corresponding INIs in your project. So once you do that, you just restart your project and we should be done. So when you restart your project, you'll know it will work because you'll be in this L demo map open world. This is the demo map. And if you go to window, world partition, world partition editor, you can actually load this map if we just select it and then load region from selection. This will load the entire demo map. And this is a pretty good map with a little quest in it and some NPCs, and it just explains a bunch of the features, so it can be really useful when you're learning Narrative Pro. But today we're going to actually make our own map, because usually you would have your own map. So we're going to go to New Folder, I'm going to call it Maps, File, New Level, Open World, and I'm just going to save Current Level as Maps, L underscore main level or whatever you want to call it. Go to window, world settings, and make sure that you're using the narrative game mode so that it spawns in a narrative character. Make sure as well that after you've made the main level, go to project settings, maps and modes, and change the startup map to the main level so that this opens when you open the project instead of the narrative demo map. And if you save at this point and hit play, you will get a character and you can run around. You can see the character has weapons. I can press T to equip different weapons from my weapon wheel. But there are a couple of issues. The first one is we don't have any map data, which we will generate in a second. And when we shoot, there is no FX right now. To fix the FX, just go to settings, show plugin content, go into the plugins, narrative pro content, abilities, and drag this cues folder into your content folder. And we'll do copy here. 
Now if you play you can see firing has all the correct FX. This is just an Unreal Engine limitation. The Qs folder has to be in your content folder, which because Narrative is a plugin, we obviously can't do that for you, so you have to do that step. Next, we're going to generate some map data. To do that, I'm going to go to Window, Place Actors. If you search for Map Tile Bounds, drag one of those in. And this basically stores all of your map data, all of the points of interest in the world, and it also takes images of the map to be displayed on the minimap. You can up the map width. Don't make it too high, otherwise your map will be very blurry. You can also increase the number of tiles if you want. I'm just going to keep that low. And we'll obviously put some stuff in the map so that actually when we take a map screenshot, it'll actually show up on the map. So I'm going to put a massive cylinder in the level, and we'll also just put a massive cube. You can put whatever you want in the level. And then in the content browser, you just want to search for navigator. And you should find this one here, utility underscore navigator. Just run that. And this is the tool that generates all of your map tiles. So I'm going to dock it there in the layout. And all you have to do is click generate tiles. And it will just do all of this automatically. You can see it's taking screenshots of the map. I can go ahead and save all the generated shots. And this just works, right? You can see if I hit play, I'm in the map. I have, you know, the cylinders showing up on the mini map. Everything's working. If I go into the world map now, you can actually see everything's showing up on the world map. You can also place waypoints. If you double click on the map, you can see I placed a waypoint. And these can be quite useful for open world games. If you get a problem with map seams between your map tiles, simply go to the map tile bounds and go to tile image size and just try bumping this up by a few pixels until the seams are fixed. So I'm going to add 10 pixels and you'll see that that will fix the issue. This is caused by rounding point errors as you zoom the map around. You'll also want to make sure that you add a nav mesh bounds to your level because some of the later tutorials we will be using navigation and we'll have NPCs running around the map so make sure to add a nice big nav mesh. And you can press P to verify that it's actually working. You should see green where the nav mesh is. Let's get some metahumans in the project because they're so easy to add now in Narrative Pro 2. You can see the bridge plugin is enabled. If I go to Quixel Bridge, if you click on metahuman presets, we've actually set up two metahumans to work with the plugin out of the box. So we don't include metahumans in the plugin because we don't have permission to do that, but we've pre-linked Oscar and Vivian. So if you add Oscar to the project, so I've downloaded it, make sure to get the cinematic one because that lets you change the uh, clothing. You can click on add here. Once you've added Oscar into the project, once you've added Oscar into the project, you'll know this is working because you'll be able to go into the pause menu, save your game first, and then click on character creator, and you will see that the metahuman just shows up. It's already linked ahead of time for you. So all you have to do is add Oscar into your project. And when you open the character creator, you will get some uh, warnings that say you need to enable some stuff. You can go ahead and click on enable missing. And here's the character creator pre-linked with Oscar. And we can do things like change the here. We can make him bald, for example. We can go to the shirt and sort of give him a different colored shirt. And if you type in a name, I'm just going to do Rubes. You can click on confirm and exit. You can now run around the map as Oscar. And everything just works. We can get our weapons out. Fire. Any, any art you have that's rigged to the metahuman will just work really nicely with this. Make sure you try out True First Person as well. It's something we've worked really hard on and we're really, really proud of it. You'll also find attachments included in Narrative Pro 2. For example, you can use a red dot sight on the rifle here and check it out. <laughs> very cool. We're going to keep it very simple because this is just the quick start guide. We will do more in depth videos, but I will show you how to spawn NPCs. So if you drag in an NPC spawner, there's a button here that says create NPC spawn. If you click on that, you now have an NPC spawn and you can move it to wherever you like. In our content folder, I'm just going to make a new NPC here by going to Narrative, Characters, NPC. I'm just going to call it Tony, and we'll make some dialogue for Tony as well. If you go to Dialogue, we can do 
D underscore Tony. We'll open up Tony. And this is basically all of Tony's stuff. You know, how much money he has, what sort of items he has, what dialogue he's supposed to play. Let's select the one we just made. You know, you can set his name and his level. You can give him an appearance. I'm just going to go ahead and do appearance many. In Tony's definition here, I'm also going to grant Tony some default abilities. I'm just going to use the default NPC abilities. We'll go into all of these different options more in depth in the NPCs tutorial. Uh, but if you click on that spawner and select Tony, I'm going to add some dialogue here for Tony by opening up that Tony blueprint. I'm going to add a speaker. Just select Tony. And compile. We'll just hit the drop down, select Tony here. We'll just say, hi, I'm Tony. And I'm just going to add a couple of player responses by dragging out. One of them, nice to meet you. The other one's going to be goodbye. If I drag out, I'm going to say, you too. I'm also going to go to class defaults and I'm going to assign this a nice dialogue shot by going to default dialogue shot. And you want to use the medium shot. Looks really good. Compile and save. And now if you run up to Tony, you can say, hi, I'm Tony. And we can say, nice to meet you. And we'll show you in the dialogue video how to add facial animations and audio and stuff like that as well. But there you go. We're going to leave it there for the quick start. I want to keep this really just to the essentials and the setup. So if you want to know more about the plugin, check out some of our other videos. We will link them in the description. Thanks for watching.